The Staffordshire Hoard is the largest hoard of Anglo-Saxon gold and silver metalwork yet found. Discovered in a field near the village of Hammerwich near Lichfield in Staffordshire, England on the 5th of July 2009, it consists of nearly 4,000 items that are nearly all military in character. The artifacts have been tentatively been dated to the 7th or 8th centuries, placing the origin of the items in the time of the Kingdom of Mercia. The hoard was valued at £3,285,000 and has now been purchased by the Birmingham Museum and Art Gallery and the Potteries Museum and Art Gallery. Here I am with Terry Herbert. Um, he made an amazing find in Staffordshire, called nicknamed the Staffordshire Hoard. Correct. Okay, and what was this hoard? Uh, it was all a battle gear. I mean, it was all, everything seemed to have been like all broken all up. And it was all uh, Anglo-Saxon. Wow. So, and was this, it was gold and silver? Or? Yeah, gold and silver, yeah. Right, okay. And um, had you detected this field often or was it a, a no, new it field? No, it was actually, the, it was only the second time I'd been on it. All right. And uh, I think if I hadn't found nothing, I don't think I would have gone on the field again because there was, it was just all junk. Right. All bits of old broken clocks. I mean, cogs out of clocks. So it was, and there weren't no coins or nothing like. So was this a ploughed field or was it a pasture field? It was pa a pasture. It had been ploughed, but it had been, it had been set. I thought there was a crop on it, uh, but when I drove past it one day, it had all been uh, cut. Right. Then uh, I saw it all all in round bales, so I thought, I, th I think it's time to go and see the farmer again. Right. Just to make sure that I can still go on, like. Okay. So you found the first few bits of, of um, gold, I, I assume. Were the first bits were gold or were they silver that you found? Gold. Right. Um, so I mean, uh, the first piece, I mean, I, I thought it was a piece of brass, actually. Right. In a, because the object it, itself, I, it looked like it was of a, a chest or a, a small uh, jewellery box. Right. It was only when I got my magnifying glass out and I was looking at it. And it's got a pin in it, and I noticed the pin had been filed, and I thought to myself, this could well be a piece of gold. Right. Okay, so then you, you took that to the farmer? No, I, I, I went to the farm later on, uh, because I, I, at the time I went to see the farmer, I got there 25 pieces by then. Oh, right. You know, and uh, I went down earlier on, and he weren't there. I presume he must have gone for, for his dinner somewhere. Right. So I went down later on in and I just caught him down the yard like. Okay. Now the first few bits you, you didn't find with a mine lab detector, but I believe you went back with the mine lab just to get some extra depth yeah. or Well, uh, extra depth. I just wanted to see what the mine lab was was gonna do on it. No, I, I thought it should be interesting to see uh, another, another machine like. I know the the mine lab had got a bit more depth of than me me other machine like. But uh, when I started using it, I was surprised what the meter was doing. To me, I mean, to anybody else, it, uh, it was like gobbledygook. But I could understand why other people had been on that field and missed it. Because right. the, the signals was really, that was crazy. Yeah. But as I started to dig with the mine lab, I, I noticed there was a pattern. And the pattern, was it was trying to interpret the gold right but as i say when when i was using the mine lab i, I used it for about that day for about, about about four hours right and when i was using it i was learning what the meter what the meter was doing i was learning i was interpreting what it was what it was telling me right and the signals was coming through but not i knew there was pieces of gold right Okay, so you had quite, on the first day, how much gold do you think you found? I found about 55, 56 pieces. Right, so that was, must have been really exciting. It was exciting, but it was, it was how much is there actually in the, how many pieces are in the ground like? Right. But as I say, so the, uh, the, the next day I went back again like. Right. And... Uh, I mean, this time I mean, it was thunder and lightning, so I could only do a, f a few hours, like now amongst the the showers and the thunderstorms. Yeah. But uh, I was I was I was I was carrying on. I was still getting the the same amount of pieces, around about fifty five pieces. Right. 
Okay, so were they scattered over a large area or was it concentrated? Uh, about 20, 20 square yards, right, I'd so say. Quite a considerable area. Yeah. Then. So the plough, uh, you, you wonder why it's never been found before because if the farmer was ploughing it so that it actually spread out over that sort of area, which I'm assuming yeah. it did, um, it's amazing that nobody actually saw it on the surface. Now, uh, I'm... I'm the, somebody told me that actually people went on there. They actually thought it was buried. They thought that there was an old farm gate. Right. Okay. So, uh, but there again, other people might have got this iffy signals, couldn't understand it, and they probably thought. I mean, there was piece, there was pieces of uh, broken uh, iron and nails and that. Right. So I presume they must have been finding them, like, and not yeah. the gold. I suppose if you, if the site was covered in post medieval stuff, like your your clock cogs and mm. things. Maybe they, they were getting fed up with digging them up and then they moved on to an area well, covered in signals. Yeah, well, the, 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 uh, the cogs uh, at the clocks, that was a bit farther down the field then was. Right. But as I was saying, I was coming up to the field. I, I, I had a little saying at the time. I said, uh, spirits of yesteryears, take me where the gold appears. Why, why I said it, I don't know, because I usually say, spirits of yesteryears, take me where the coins appear. Yeah. But uh, yeah. something on there, was. I think, felt like it, that was drawing me to this one this one. This one area. Yeah. So you've been detecting for a couple of days. Um, when was it that you actually got the, well, I take it you got the experts in at some stage? Got in touch with the Fines Eliza officer. Right. At Birmingham uh, Museum, uh, Duncan Slark. Right. And uh, told him yeah. what was what had been found. I, I think it was a bit bewilderment, you know, that, you know, you know, because he said his, people reckon they found this and when he's gone, gone like, you know, it's nothing like it. Okay. Anyway, when he came, I mean, to see somebody who was amazed, he yeah. just couldn't stop saying, wow. Yeah. When he saw the, the one box on the table, he just looked at it. He took a piece out and he, in his arms stretched out and his eyes wide open, he just said, wow. Yeah. <laughs> then he says, is this it? And I said, no, there's another six boxes. Yeah. And he just could not believe it. No. no. So the, in there, I always remember the pictures of, of the find, and there was a gold cross. Now, did you find that, or, or, or did that come out? Uh, no, I found the gold cross. Right. That, that was actually found with the mine lab, that was. Right, because that, that was very really uh, impressive. Yeah, and the, the piece with the, the inscription on it, that was found with the mine lab as right. well. And the inscription was on that piece that was uh, per, made it more personal, didn't it? Yeah, so yeah. That was fantastic. So so he, he saw that. Did he then take it away, or did...? Uh, yes, uh, he started, actually, he started taking some photos. He asked if he could take some uh, pictures of them, like, so he could put them on, uh, email them, you know, uh, yeah, to, other, to uh, other archaeologists, and uh, yeah. that was the, you could say, that was the lighting of the fuse for the big bomb that was going to go off. <laughs> So when did the archaeologists actually come back to do the excavation? Because I think they, did they, they, well, did they come back and do an excavation? Yeah, uh, two of them just came, uh, they came like, and they just wanted, they just did a, a small test area, which is about square metre square, like, you know, right. just seeing what was, what was uh, in there, like, anyway, and they just said to me, do you mind, uh, you know, having a look over, you know, to that one side, like, you know, with your detector, like, anyway, I was just, Simple as anything, like all of a sudden, as my coil went over the over the grass at the same time, as my coil passed, I looked down and I could just see something goldish with with garnets. And uh, I said to the two archaeologists, I said, "Yeah, you better stop what you're doing and come and have a look at this here." Yeah. And when they came over, it it frightened them. Yeah, this was it. This was the bomb going off. Right. Because what they saw on top, virtually just covered with some, with some grass. So all it was just covered with grass. Right. It was amazement. You know, it was amazing because it was the fright of having the objects. So there was stuff being on top. This is when the, the actual the bomb went off because I. Was, they just seem to go off in different directions. Now it came the mobile phones yeah. and phoning for security yeah. and uh, funds. It was all, you know, they said we'd go over a major digger and that was it, like. Yeah. And this is where I stood back, like. And anyway, they come back after, like, and they took some photos. 
and uh, they wanted something to put on the ground by to emphasise the size. Yeah. Anyway, they'd got no between them. They got no money, <laughs> and I, I had a fur around in my pocket and took twenty pence piece out, and I put it on. No, we put it on the ground. So, yeah. and that was the photo. Like, right. Okay. So I, I take it they got their funds, and yeah. they came back and did a proper excavation. Yeah. So, so how many people were on that, and how how long did it take to, to I mean, sort all that out? I mean, that they actually wasted two days just sticking pieces of cane in the ground. Right. I mean, we could actually be digging. They just wanted, they wanted me to pinpoint where objects was. Right. So it was a matter of over two days. There was just sticking. I suppose what they were probably trying to do was just to work out the extent of it so yeah, that they yeah. didn't dig where it was unnecessary. Um, As I say, then they, they from uh, Birmingham University Archaeologist Department, uh, about four people came like. Right. So not, um, not a big dig then, really. I mean. Oh no, no, no! So, the, 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 I expected at least to yeah, throw fifty people on it. Or oh no, well. <laughs> and did they bring a machine in, or was it all? No, done by no, hand? it was all done with builders' shovels. But I mean, yeah. some of the soil was that hard. You know, it was just ridiculous. But uh, on the dig, actually, excavation, uh, a lady from Staffordshire Council came over, and. Uh, it was a, a, a lady, probably in the, in the 60s, and she said she would like to have a little dig. Could right. I find her a, a signal? Right. Anyway, they just excavated a little section, one square metre square, right. and uh, I went over with my detector. I mean, they'd gone down to the subsoil, to archaeologists, there was nothing else there. I got a signal and I said there's something there. I pinpointed it for her. She dug it out. Mm. And when she retrieved it at the ground, it was a pyramid mount. Oh. And she said, well, she says, oh, he says, look at that. And I says, oh, that's me what the archaeologists have, have, have missed. Like, you know, they think there was nothing below the subsoil and there was still stuff there. Like. And uh, she actually said, what's this worth? About five or six hundred pounds. <laughs> and I leaned over and just said to her, between 20 and 40,000. Mm -hmm. And they actually said, oh my God. And it was just, a, 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 it just suddenly turned into a bag of nerves. Yeah. And they said, oh, I can't wait to tell my husband what I've dug up. Yeah. So how important was MyLab technology to you on this find? Well, with the MyLab, actually, I could go a lot deeper than any of the machines because uh, actually the, the one... Uh, situation where I come across it was one day uh, a gentleman from the Staffordshire uh, Archaeology Department came down and he says and he said no digging today you're gonna I said I'm gonna do the digging he says and he told me straight he says uh, his, his job is in, in an office yeah. and he says but I'm gonna he says I've, I've come down to dig the 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 objects for you he says so you just pinpoint them anyway I got me 15 inch coil on Right. And we, I got a signal, and the meter was saying really deep. But when he actually dug it, it was getting on to 20 inches down <laughs> for a small piece of old brass. Right. And I never, and he had to sit virtually on the ground, and he was that, he was sweating that profusely, and he said, Why did I volunteer to do this? <laughs> so what I actually did, I said, What I'll do, I'll put the standard coil back on again. Yeah. They did the excavation. It all went quiet for a long time, I suppose, and then they set the value. What what was the value, by the way? Well, they valued it at three point two eight five million. Wow, that's a, that's a, a good sum, and that's that was then split between you and the farmer. Yep. Wow. So obviously, you're one of the most successful detectorists now in England. There's not many people who have found something as big as what you found. It's, I think it's widely believed to be one of the most important finds ever yep. of a metal detector. So what would your advice be to other people trying to emulate your success? Well, if you, if you want to start at detecting, go for a good machine. Don't start with a small machine, you know, because uh, it's wasted money buying one machine then buy, then buying another one. Like, I mean, I'd, I'd go and buy one of the, probably one of the top three best machines at, at, at this moment. Like. Right. But... Uh, Author also is if it's an iffy signal, you just got to dig it, right? And that's it. If the, if the meter goes crazy, dig it, and you might learn, right? Yeah, I must admit, I know I've seen people 
walk away from signals, and you you hear you could half hear what they they were digging. They say, mm. "Well, that sounded good. Oh, no, yeah. it's too big." Yeah. And, uh, 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 sorry, it's too big. Sounds good, but you're walking away from it. Yeah. And so many people do it. So and and you you're the proof. You yep. got to dig those signals. Yes, it. Yeah. Persevere and. I mean, there's got to be more of, of, of this type of stuff. Mine ain't the only Anglo-Saxon ord. There's got to be more around the country somewhere. Oh, yeah. There's just got to be. Yeah. I'd be surprised if, if mine is the ever, if it's the only Anglo-Saxon ord. Yeah. Well, the fact that it's been was uh, broken up pieces, it, it sounds like it was divided up. So then probably yeah, other well, people, that's it. Yeah, other yeah, people yeah. have to bury different yeah. miles of that stuff yeah. all over the place. Yeah. I mean, uh, other people said, you know, why do you think it was there? And I think round there somewhere where I found it, there's, there's got to be a, a Saxon village. There's got to be. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because uh, a, 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 a chap from the club, Jim Wall, he actually found us a small uh, pendant off a necklace. Right. And apparently, uh, he, found, he got one, and he said that it might have had eight to ten little dangly bits. Yep. Kind of, yeah. So there's oh. more. So th they've got to be there somewhere. Oh well. Anyway, thank you very much for talking, agreeing to talk with MLO yeah. TV. It's been a great insight into an amazing discovery. Right, and I hope you all enjoyed watching this. Um, I, I'm sure we all agree this is truly one of the greatest finds ever to be found in the UK. Mind Lab, world's best metal detection technologies.